So today I'd like to talk about uh, using splitters and mergers to create an overflow uh, valve, if you will. I don't know what you'd actually call one of those, but essentially the idea here is you can see we've got a very well load balanced uh, smelter system smelting iron into ingots at a rate of about 480 per minute for anyone who's interested. Now that's all great and good, but at the very end, the very top there, we have a storage tower that will eventually get full and will back the whole system up. And obviously that's not very appealing. It's a waste of machines because they're not doing anything, and it's you know, spikes and dips in the uh, power grid that some people don't like, myself included. So we need to create a way to solve this problem, and this can be applied to virtually anything that is sent into storage. So as we can see here, here's the output of all, our, all of our machines, going straight into the storage tower, which works for the short term, but eventually when that tower fills up, we're going to have a big problem. So instead, in its place, we're going to put in an overflow pipe, so that should the tower get full, all of the ingots go to a second output that can be sent somewhere else, preferably a uh, resource sink for coupons. Let me uh, get everything set up and we'll start building it. Now, before we begin, I do have to give credit where credit is due. Uh, this is actually a design that I saw posted on Reddit by, if I remember the name right, IR69OG. I posted this about three months ago as of the time of this recording, and this is where I first learned about it. And of course he goes into detail to explain how it works, why it works well, and you know, things like that, as well as he gives some alternate solutions, but I found this one to work pretty well. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with splitters, six of them actually, and we're just going to go ahead, drop them down, and you see I'm spacing them so that we have a little tiny gap in between each one, just enough to see between them. Let's go ahead and finish that. And now we have six splitters, one after the other. Now what we're going to do is we're going to place just a bunch more. This one doesn't matter. They're just uh, spacing. They're just spacing it out. On top, however, we want mergers. And do take care to make sure that the outputs are facing about the same way. It'll just make life easier. The mergers can face backwards if you need them to, but in this case, it's going to be easier to keep them all facing the same way. Now we can go ahead and remove the middle splitters. And from here, we're going to go ahead and grab some lifts. Usually the fastest ones you have are good. Uh, because I know we're only getting 480 items a minute, I'll just use the Mark IV lifts. And you're just going to go ahead and place them on the sides of all the splitters, taking care to make sure that everything's facing correct and lined up properly. Now before we do this side, I'm going to go ahead and grab my Mark IV belts, and we're just going to go ahead and tuck them right in between here. And I just do this for every single one of the splitters and mergers. Thankfully they're close enough together that you really should be able to just double click and it'll put it in place. There we are, we're all connected on that side. We can go ahead and put the conveyor lifts on this side now. And that's it. So now to go over how this works, why it works, and why it's a good solution, in my opinion. And the idea is that these splitters, when you chain enough of them together, will split most items off. So uh, what I mean by that, every splitter will divide its output by the number of connected outputs. If you have three belts connected, it will divide by three. So you, you know, each side gets one third of the input. Now, if you send one third of that, or you know that, um, one of those outputs to another splitter, that splitter is going to divide that one third by another three. So you go from one third to one ninth. Next one goes to one twenty seventh etc etc as long as all the inputs are connected as we do have here what you get after six splitters is only one in a thousand items will actually make it out of this uh overflow end here now it's not a hundred percent effective because we do have a little bit of leakage past but i think one in a thousand is an acceptable loss because i mean if you've got a thousand of something you have plenty of it to begin with so what's happening is that each of these uh, other outputs are being fed up into these mergers. This is where the items that you're sending to storage will collect. Most of your items, 999 out of 1000, will end up up here. Down below, however, if everything gets stopped up, if your storage is full, the mergers will be full, the only way they can travel would be straight through. So your bottom output, your splitters, will feed to whatever your overflow solution is, usually a resource sink. 
I'll just go ahead and set something up just to uh, show you what I mean. So this is how you would go about setting it up. Your mergers on the top go to your storage solution, such as your containers, you know, your storage tower for grabbing things out of or acting as a buffer. And your splitters feed into your overflow solution, such as a resource sink, which is an excellent way to gain coupons passively over time, because you can just ignore the system and as long as it has electricity, it will continue to run. So let's go ahead and get everything fired up and watch the system in action. All right, so as we can see, we have all of our smelters running again. Everything's again load balance. I did upgrade the belts to something faster because things were getting a little bit hung up and, you know, a little bit camera magic. But as you can see, we have about 480 ingots per minute being fed into the input of our overflow system here. And as you can see with the conveyors, the first few uh, in the series are actually taking most of the ingots up, as to be expected, and every so often, one further down will appear. So, like I said, mathematically, we can expect about one in every thousand ingots to make it all the way through into the resource sink. And again, out of a thousand ingots, losing one probably isn't something you're even going to notice. So now, as they're being all divided up, split up, and sent up to the mergers, the mergers are now all feeding one after the other to our storage solution. Great, so we got a lot of things stored up. You know, we've got some time until this fills up, probably about, you know, five, ten minutes, fill up our storage, then it'll be full. But let's assume that our storage is full, that it's all filled up. Well, what's going to happen is suddenly the, uh, the buffers and the belts inside the mergers are going to start to stack up and fill up. And as they become saturated, you can see things start to fall through until it's all filled up and your overflow starts sending things into your resource sink. So that's exactly it. Now, of course, our system isn't full, so we're going to go ahead and put that back. And you can see when you start to take things out, it now prefers to take the upper track. And of course, because we have saturation feeding all the way down, it will take a minute uh, to slow down the loss rate. But again, if your production rate's high enough, and if you have enough stored, this won't be an issue. Now, I'm not exactly sure if I've already mentioned, but at the time of this recording, the devs already have an overflow system now implemented in the experimental branch of Satisfactory, and that is with these smart splitters. They can now handle overflow and do exactly this in the size of a single splitter. However, that doesn't mean that this system is entirely irrelevant. The thing is, the smart splitter is an advanced component. It takes AI limiters, and of course, once you're at that point in the game, yes, they're going to be plentiful and it'll be easier to make uh, smart splitters. But in the earlier parts of the game, if you're the kind of person who really wants one of these uh, over overflow handlers uh, a lot sooner than you know waiting to get AI limiters, or even cheaper than AI limiters, this is still an option for the early game, and it is important to have as a part of your tool belt. It is bulky. It's Kind of a pain to set up, but it works, and it works rather well. Your machines will always run, they won't run out, they won't cause dips and spikes on the power grid if it's low balanced. Life is good, everyone's happy. So if there's anything I didn't quite cover or any questions you may have, feel free to ask. I will tend to the questions as quick as I can. Aside from that, just wait for the next one.